single. What I'm going to tell you are five reasons to begin with that maybe doing a master's doesn't make that much sense if you want to go on and do a PhD, and then five reasons why you really should consider doing a master's. So it's kind of, hopefully it should be quite balanced. I'll let you be the judge of that. So the first one is money, which will be, is a kind of an impossible to cover all bases with money. PhDs typically will pay you a stipend, whereas a master's you will maybe take out a loan in order to pursue that study. So in one scenario you're getting paid, in the other scenario you're increasing your existing student debt. Unless you have um, already accumulated wealth to kind of pay off your master's in one go. So with that comes the caveat of is, is it better to start earning immediately? Continue paying for education? Like you're gonna get more education during your PhD anyway, you may as well just head right on in. So yeah, that f that's the first point of maybe skip a master's, it costs more money. So the second point is kind of a similar kind of argument but with time. And we all know time is money. Maybe taking that extra year to get to your PhD or if you've been working part time it might be uh, multiple years in order to get from a bachelor's to a PhD by doing a master's. Maybe you're thinking, oh I don't really want to spend another year doing a master's and then another three years or four years in my PhD before then entering industry if maybe industry is your direct target. It does take time to do a master's and it does take a lot of time to do a PhD so if for whatever reason you're kind of thinking you've got this five-year plan of okay bachelor's PhD out into the world or start working on getting a professorship or something and get the cogs going if you're kind of trying to speed run academia maybe time is a factor why you shouldn't do a master's. The third one will vary quite a lot, but relocation. I personally do not like relocating all the time, and I try and relocate as minimally as possible. Um, and one thing I particularly didn't enjoy about undergrad is I was having to find new flatmates, change houses, enter new rental agreements, kind of on an annual basis. But yeah, I felt like I'd moved in and out enough. So maybe in reflection, if you're having to change unis for a master's degree and then change unis again for the PhD, that's another big move to consider and especially if you're not kind of the stereotypical student who's you know in their early 20s maybe you're 30 and you've got the beginnings of a family those relocation issues might be a reason why actually it's better to relocate once for a PhD rather than have that initial uh, delay due to a master's. Number four will kind of depend on your discipline but for me I really dislike doing exams. I don't really want to do exams anymore and part of the reasons I'm so overjoyed to be doing a PhD is it's a different form of assessment and I know that in STEM fields there's often a very high proportion exam to coursework based. With that comes, you know, exam stress and revision periods and a very different style of learning to if you're on maybe something more coursework based. So that was one of the main reasons that I would maybe go, actually, you know what, do you want to do another master's year with another six exams or whatever? Because it might be that exams are something that take a massive toll on your mental health, in which case maybe going straight to a PhD could be better um, and have that different style of assessment kind of continuously. Number five, number five is opportunity cost. So what I mean by that is maybe there's a PhD that you really want to do and you've seen an advert for it and you were initially thinking you're going to do a master's but that would mean that you can't then apply for this opportunity. If there's a PhD you want to do, always apply and you think that you would be a good fit for the project, kind of trust yourself and apply. If you're not, if you're not kind of skilled enough yet, they'll let you know. They're not, they won't take you on kind of and then be like, oh actually you're not very good at this. They'll, they'll be able to figure it out before you get to that stage. Now getting back to why maybe you should do a master's time again. A PhD is a three to four year commitment. You're tied down to that commitment for three years. With a master's, if you're still not sure about whether research is the right decision for you, you can maybe consider after a master's year going directly into industry, which means instead of spending three years kind of pulling yourself through a PhD, you kind of leave after one year of a master's and you're you're able to just enter the workplace. So it could kind of save you time if it does turn out that you don't want to do a PhD. Like it's a good, the same thing as you wouldn't start like a road trip across America having never done 
you know, a two hour drive before. You wouldn't suddenly skip to an eight hour drive. Also, it means that you're gonna have the time to understand what your research interests are. It gives you that extra year to, uh, outside of when you're doing your lessons, just spend time figuring out what do you feel passionate enough about to do a PhD in. And I think that's quite important when you're searching for a PhD. Number seven, or whatever number we're on, is knowledge base. So equally, you've had another year of learning before you enter your PhD, which means you've kind of over someone who's got a bachelor's, you've got a head start. You're going to know certain terms, you're going to know maybe some more sophisticated programming techniques or whatever it is in your field. Maybe you know more sophisticated lab techniques. You've kind of already reached that point. You've, you've understood things a little bit more thoroughly, even if they're not directly applicable to your PhD topic. And that's going to be really helpful in terms of, okay, so maybe you did a very advanced module. You now know what it is to learn things to that advanced level. Equally, number eight, application success. If you've done a master's, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be successful in applying for your PhD. I know people who've applied with outstanding bachelor's, outstanding master's results and still been rejected but it does mean that when you're engaging with the interviewer you're going to have a better understanding of what they're looking for because you'll have done maybe multiple research projects maybe one research project number nine is confidence if you are at all aware of academia you'll probably by now have heard imposter syndrome and it's probably going to be one of those things that gets mentioned over and over again because it's so prolific in academia imposter syndrome if you've not heard of it is feeling like you don't belong, that you're not good enough, that you've somehow fraudulently figured out a way to, you know, sneak yourself into academia without people noticing that you're really um, not intelligent or something along those lines, or not a hard worker. And I think if you've done a master's, it might somehow lessen the chances of you feeling like that. If you go from bachelor's and everyone else has got a master's immediately, it's kind of, oh, there's, there's your red flag, but it's not really a massive issue. I don't know. I threw it in there. I think, I think having a master's can help you feel more confident in your abilities, mainly because you have more. And equally, you will be fine. Number 10, commitment. Uh, doing a master's is less commitment than a PhD. And if you are in any doubt about doing a PhD, doing a master's is a very good kind of litmus test of, you know what, this is the right genre of work for me. I, I enjoy doing research, I enjoy doing lab work or whatever it is, so I'm going to do it. Equally, if you are finishing a bachelor's and you want to go directly to a PhD, I would strongly recommend CDTs. And if you don't know what they are, I would suggest you watch this video or just have a Google, but they can be a really helpful um, type of PhD for really getting your knowledge base up in that first year. I hope you enjoyed this video, um, like and subscribe if you want to hear more of this kind of content or if you're in the middle of a PhD search right now. Uh, goodbye!